Hello chess friends and welcome to the of Chess channel and welcome back to our Queen's Gambit Decline series. So in this series we're following this very nice opening from White's and from Black's perspective and today we're continuing with our Queen's Gambit Decline series and the so-called Taraj Defense. The Taraj Defense we have explained with uh, some really important sidelines that you have to be familiar with. I think we have covered many many important strategical and tactical concepts of this opening also for White and for Black and today we're continuing with the uh, variation that is in my opinion uh, the best Way for black to proceed um, in the Taraj defense I think it's must know theory and I think also that white has sort of a line which is also must know theory so I think uh, this approach of white and also the approach of blacks are very very important in this uh, particular variation because if you're getting all of this theory I think you can get smashed very very easily and very very early in, in the game that's why I think uh, this is simply something that you have to know if you want of course to play the Taraj defense but of, of course also if you face the Taraj defense this is simply as I said must know theory so let's check out now one instructive game I think this game shows all of the most important uh, strategical and tactical concepts of the advanced variation of the Taraj defense it's a game played by Boris Gerifan the former world championship challenger and of course the legend of the sport of Alexander Grishchuk so I think as I said this game you can use as your cornerstone in order to get really good good theoretical knowledge about the Taraj defense about the advanced variation so let's check out now again what is the Taraj defense what is then the advanced variation and what is uh, the most important strategical goal for white and for black so here we have d4 by Boris Gerfan d5 by Grishuk c4 uh, e6 the queen's game decline knight to c3 and we have now the move c5 which is now of course the Taraj defense we have c takes d5 we have talked about this ideas many many times um, in the series so please in order to get a better understanding of this particular video you have to also check out the previous videos because in that videos we have already explained uh, the most important strategical ideas uh, already so after move c takes d5 we're repeating again after e takes d5 the potential d takes c5 would cause an isolated pawn um, on the d file so that's why uh, most of the times uh, black is risking to get an isolated pawn which could be really a strategical uh, disadvantage in the continuation of the game so here after move um, e takes d5 we have a normal move here by Boris Gerlfan knight to f3 knight to c6 and now after move g3 knight to f6 this is really the most classical system that you can play after move bishop to g2 and bishop to e7 castling castling so all of these moves we have covered before and now after move bishop to g5 now comes a little bit different theory because already uh, the lines that we have covered were something like c takes d4 but also after move h6 then of course some some ideas of bishop to f6 so here comes a new move which is now the so-called advanced variation with the move c4 and there is really uh, something that you have to recognize immediately when you face this move c4 black is relying many times on this pawn majority on the queen side so it means black has of course an advantage on the queen side three versus two so that's probably something that bothers white in the continuation of the game because a6 b5 could happen then b4 a4 similar stuff and you could get smashed uh, here immediately on the queen side but the problem about this move c4 is that you have uh, lost a little bit of a dynamic game in the center of the board that's something also that we have to recognize because when the, the pawn structure is dynamic like here d4 c5 when we have a collision in the center of the board then white can never proceed with the normal e4 idea now when the move c4 happens and when the pawn structure gets finely cemented on the queen side then some e4 pawn breakthroughs as strategical goals are working here for white so that's why um, you have to understand the dynamic of the game here the dynamics really changed uh, the pawn structure after move c5 is dynamic but now after move c4 is static so it means now that we should really really focus on the squares that we can occupy for instance we should also target here from white perspective the square e4 uh, e5 pardon me and from black perspective uh, white uh, has a problem around the square e4 so that's why uh, these are the clear targets for white and for black and if you have the opportunity to opportunity to occupy do it uh, as fast as you can because you not have maybe um, uh, time to do that so if you have time to do that immediately you should do it that's why i think we can understand the next couple more moves by white very very easily white most of the times in this particular variation plays now the move knight to e5 the problem 
about the move knight to e5 is that you cannot take of course knight takes e5 because after d takes e5 you get uh, the knight deflected from the defense of the d5 square and then of course the d5 becomes a long-term weakness actually the d5 square is really really huge weakness in this uh, position many many times so what you could do here maybe from black's perspective is of course to defend the spawn with the move bishop to e6 or you could maybe try in a more aggressive way with the move bishop to f5 but keep in mind when you playing the game from black's perspective if you playing too aggressively then the battle about around the square d5 could be lost so that's why in some occasions white can even proceed with their normal bishop to f6 just getting rid of some defenders of the d5 square if you take of course with the pawn then the pawn structure is too much weakened here um in front of uh, uh, in front of black's king so after bishop to f6 still knight to d5 is working uh you can maybe try knight takes e5 then uh, d takes e5 bishop to e5 but now with rook to c1 i really left uh, white's position especially because of the centralized knight or you could play also the game a little bit different you don't have to immediately take if you don't want to uh, you could also maybe fix the pawn structure further with the move f4 cementing simply this uh, knight and even if for instance black tries something like queen to b6 to um create some madness around the square b2 and maybe also around the square d4 it's not a problem i think still we can play knight to d5 and after a couple of trades knight to d4 here we have maybe e3 and now you have to step back with your knight and then of course also knight to f6 is still working so as i said it's a pleasant game i think here for uh for white too many weaknesses also the c4 is weak also the b7 is weak so uh this is simply a much much better position for white so you see this aggressive method to play the move bishop to f5 is not so dangerous because uh, uh, you have to stuck a little bit to the defense of your d5 pawn because it becomes now more and more um, of a strategical disadvantage here for black so that's why many times as we said bishop to e6 is the main line and now comes the critical moment of this line so you should really fam be familiar with this idea knight to e5 and now the next move is really really important the next move that white needs to play is now the move b3 b3 in my opinion is one of the best ways to break uh, simply the space advantage that black has built here because uh, as we said if you don't get rid of the space advantage immediately you could get smashed with some ideas of a6 b5 so the pawn majority attack of blacks will be too much to handle i think here for white so that's why with the move b3 okay uh here in the continuation maybe black could try uh c takes b3 but now after knight to c6 for instance this is also a move that you have to be familiar with just simplify the game uh trade off more pieces we can notice now after b takes c6 we can play now a takes b3 and the problem is now i think huge huge problem here around the square c5 so now in this particular scenario when black takes of course uh, here uh, c takes b3 black is left many many times with this backward pawn on c6 which is of course a huge huge strategical problem but also with the weak square on c5 so too too many weaknesses i think in black's position in the near future we can expect uh, some ideas knight to a4 rook to c1 and then knight to c5 we have also great tension here uh, by the bishop and then in the near future maybe some ideas of f3 e4 are even working to break as i said in the beginning of the video maybe with the position could be broken with the move e4 so that's why i think uh, this is a good position for black uh, for, for white pardon me although of course black has some chances with some ideas to play maybe himself with the move c5 but uh, still even if you do that then of course again you risk some isolated pawns on d5 so that's why i don't think after move b3 that black will take many times uh, the pawn on um, uh, b3 immediately so maybe as a long-term tactic this could work but not immediately i'm sure so here after move b3 uh, alexander grishuk plays now uh, very very aggressive queen to a5 and there are now several moves that you can do you can play queen to c2 or queen to d2 i like more a little bit this move queen to d2 because of the fact for instance if you play something like knight to e5 here from black perspective then after d takes uh sorry after move knight to e5 then of course d takes e5 and now black could uh play some liberating ideas with knight to e4 but actually it's not a problem because still you can take knight to e4 and after queen to d2 we have bishop to d2 so now after d takes e4 now bishop to e4 and still white is much much better although of course black can also take out this pawn but now this pawn will be taken probably 
the a7 is also weak and here we have really beautiful position where we have uh five pawns against three pawns on the king side so uh, we should simply storm with these pawns then i think white is again a comfortable game so that's why um idea is to get the liberation here to get somehow um simplification are not working here for black black needs to be careful because uh, many times after move queen to d2 uh, black's normal progress is to move rook to d8 which is still i think a good choice because we have said that d5 is a long-term weakness and now if something gets cleared with knight to e5 d takes e5 then you see d4 could be very very dangerous uh, with the support of the rook you see the rook is already the uh, where the queen is so this is now also a common idea that black is playing now and now we come to the critical part also of the game so now white has to stuck with this plan white has to undermine the pressure on the queen side because as we said b5 b4 is going to happen for sure so that's why you want to have the queen side clarified you have to play b takes c4 and now comes one of the critical moments of the game here there is i think only one good way how black can make progress many times i'm not sure even why black is playing the move bishop to b4 and bishop to b4 is actually not the best of moves here although it seems like an aggressive move it pins the knight uh, knight to e4 is going to happen for sure so this is really a bad bad mistake that black is playing many many times in the uh, in the this advanced variation of the Tatar's defense so here i faced many many times this position and i have really great success even even against much much stronger opponent because you have to simply again stuck to your plan we're undermining the pressure like uh boris gerfan did here uh, uh, knight to c6 b takes c6 and now a very important move that you can play bishop to f6 the problem is now there is really a beautiful trap if for instance your opponent played bishop to c3 immediately um, then it's game over you have queen to g5 you just sacrifice the rook but we're threatening checkmate even if g6 happens then queen to h6 and you cannot prevent anymore this checkmate on g7 so it's game over believe me or not i played this trap i don't know maybe 10 times in my life uh, 10 times my opponents fell for this so it's really unbelievable they simply go for the knight i'm not sure even why so as i said bishop to c3 is losing the game immediately but let's go back after move b takes c4 there is really only one good move here for black and uh, it's really a wild move and many times black is not seeing this move uh, and black has to see this move i think if black wants to have a comfortable game the only good move here after b takes c4 and believe me or not you will face this position many many times this is really a crucial position this is the most often played position i think of the advanced variation of the tata defense and from b takes c4 the only good move here is believe me or not knight takes d4 simply sacrificing the knight but it would be only a temporarily sacrifice because uh, for instance if uh, something like c takes d5 happens then of course queen to c3 is perfectly fine and now after queen to c3 we have also this idea knight to e2 and this should probably lead into a draw because uh, black has also the opportunity to recapture the queen and now if for instance something like king to h1 knight takes c3 then uh, we have here d takes uh, e6 and after f takes e6 of course white can also take out the pawn but now with bishop to d6 i think this is playable for black especially uh, because of the fact that uh, here these knights are very very dangerous uh, the rook has already occupied the default maybe we have sort of weakness uh, on the square e6 but i think in the near future we can simplify the game further by trading off more pieces and as i said this is really a must know theory because you, even if uh, white doesn't play the move c takes d4 for instance if uh, something like queen takes d4 happens then of course this idea is working we have uh, d takes c4 the queen is attacked the problem is now if you play uh, somewhere with the queen both of these knights are hanging the queen knight on c3 and also the knight on e5 so you could maybe escape once and try to protect both of these knights but with bishop to c5 actually it's not a good move anymore here you have to play queen to f4 and now after queen to c3 again white uh, doesn't gain anything out of this position black has simplified the game and uh, i think it's a good position here for black again so this is really a must know move that you have to play uh, if you want to stay in the game uh, 
from black's perspective knight to d4 really hard to see a beautiful sacrifice it would have been but here in the continuation Grishuk played the common mistake i think it's really the common mistake that uh, taras defense players are making i'm not sure why as i said i played so many times this position i have even some great uh, sacrifices against grand measures that i won uh, in this particular position so from this point on white has really comfortable game and boris gelfand of course a great attacker a great tactician uh, will not let this uh, game slip he played now knight to c6 as i said b takes c6 he played a little bit different mover but still with the same ideas uh, bishop to f6 and similar stuff we have d takes c4 and now this idea bishop to f6 as we said bishop to c3 is not working here you get this tactical shot so here in the continuation we have uh, uh pardon me f remove bishop to f6 g takes f6 which weakens a little bit further the pawn structure in front of the king and i think we can agree here that white is simply a comfortable game look at this weaknesses c6 weak c4 weak a7 weak f6 weak we have here many square weaknesses in uh um, in black's camp so it's i think a pleasant game here to play for white and there are uh three games uh, in this position, Gelfand versus Grishuk. As I said, we have also Shakriba Majarov against Varojan Akobian and also Vesle So against Varojan Ak Akobian. All of these games, uh, no winning games for Black here, so it's almost uh, like a losing position already for Black. So, as I said, let's go back to the critical moment. Black needs to play this move knight to d4. Be familiar with this idea if you're playing the game with the Black pieces. It's a wild sacrifice, but it's a must sacrifice that you have to play here. So, okay, after bishop to f6, g takes f6, we have e3 by, uh, by Gelfan fixing the pawn structure. Now c5, we have d5, bishop to c3, rook to c3, bishop to d5, bishop to d5, rook to d5. We have rook to, uh, queen to c2, and okay, the game is more and more simplified. Black has maybe some pass pawns on the c file, but uh, here white has already played a beautiful blockade. This pawns will be taken for sure after a couple moves the c5 is weak f6 is weak a7 is weak so that's a bad game here for for black for sure so here rook to c8 rook takes c4 we have queen to d2 now of course uh Gelfand includes more pieces into the game rook to c1 rook to, uh, queen takes the queen on c2 rook takes c2 rook to c6 and now of course the king has to play in an end game here king to e2 rook to a5 rook to b1 also including this rook on the seventh rank of course rook to d6 rook to b8 first the check and now rook to h4 very very nice move you cannot really protect all of the weaknesses in the position uh here it's i think a completely losing game for for black so after move rook to h4 we have a rook to b6 a rook to c8 here rook uh, king to uh, d7 we have a rook to h8 rook to b4 and now uh, Gelfand simply takes this weak pawn we have rook to b6 here we have rook to h7 and now Grishuk takes out this pawn but also this pawn can be taken we have also rook to f6 after a couple of trades here uh, Boris Gelfand simply pushed the pawn we have very important move rook to c8 getting behind this pawn so rook to f7 we have king to e2 and now simply here pushing the pawns further and in this position Alexander Grishuk resigned so as I said let's go back to this main main theory so after uh, the, uh, the beginning here we have Calvin, Calvin, bishop to g5 and now c4 this is now the advanced variation the next moves that white has to play i think are knight to e5 then bishop to e6 and then b3 b3 and knight to e5 are crucial moves if you want to beat the Tatar's defense especially when the position gets more and more closed you want to liberate your life with bishop attack further the d5 pawn as we said white can get challenged with the move queen to a5 queen to d2 rook to d8 and now after b takes c4 a must move that black need to play is of course knight to d4 so this is i think a position that you have to be familiar with that you have to know for white and for black's perspective if you want uh, to have some winning chances for both sides so okay i hope that you really like these ideas and i hope that you enjoyed the video this will be now our last video of the Taraj defense so we're skipping to a new opening be prepared it's getting even wilder we have some wild lines of the ragos then and similar stuff so uh i think in the queen's game the client there are so many beautiful tactical lines that you have to be familiar with so i think uh, we continue with this beautiful beautiful opening the queen's game the client one of the most uh, one of the most often played uh, chess openings now these days be prepared this will be a long long session and uh, if you want to see of course more about the tarash check out our tarash defense series with some more strategical and tactical ideas here's the link of our series and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course